Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' H, and tonight we're going to do a little bit of 3D comparison. So, as a few people get on here, I'm going to get all everyone, let everyone get in, get settled in, so we can have a nice conversation about 3D products. And I have got just a variety of things here for you to, to experience. And I'm also going to log on to my Shapeway store, so you can get a little backyard picture of what it is we're going to be talking about um, and we will go on that way so we can talk about things share links and things it'll be pretty cool let's see yeah there we go there's Carson I Carson and Garrett is in all of these guys, most of these guys, there's going to be a lot of people know what I'm talking about. You're going to know the language. So for first timers, if you don't know anything about 3D, this will be helpful to you and at least give you a taste of what it is uh, a lot of us are into now. Um, 3D has just made our world so much better because now we can get specific things we're looking for. Hi Ryan, how are you? Thanks for coming in. Just logging into some stuff here, getting everything on my laptop set up while uh, people join this show. That and uh, I need to be in my Shapeways account because I don't remember just everything that I bought. Because I bought, uh, my orders got screwed up, things got canceled, and blah, 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 blah. And, PIA and long story short I ended up with like four or five different orders there he is hi Carson all right here we go let's see what this one was and let me see that was here we go right click open that one Okay, now we'll go. Ryan, how are you? It is going well. Nice of you to stop in. I don't think I've seen you on uh, one of the shows before. Glad to have you here. There we go. Got some neat stuff here. There we go. Got that one. And... Ingots, elastoplastic. We're going to talk about elastoplastic. I was having technology trouble. <laughs> yeah. Never bought elastoplastic before. That one's going to be interesting. And then I need one more. That one, let me see, that one came in, I think, on the first. Oh, good. Thanks, Ryan. Um, sometimes when I'm not looking right at the com I try not to look at the comments so I don't get distracted. Uh, just to keep things orderly and on task. Uh, let's see. View. Open links. There we go. In gates. Nope, not that one. And this one was more in gates. Ah, forget that. Don't need that one. I'm trying to find one specific thing because I, I tried a new plastic that uh, gosh that one shipped out on the 10th let's try that one that was a herd bumper so it wasn't the 10th um, da -dum, da -dum. Is it that bad when I've got so many orders that I just I fritz and lose total track of what it is that I bought? It's kind of a, a pain when you're dealing with shapeways. Just some of that stuff happens. Oh, good for you, Ryan. Now, what are you going to do with your trucks that you bought? 
He bought two of the C65s from Logan Skeel after uh, watching one of my shows. That's great. Acro acrylic, that's what it was. Acrylic. Yeah, I hope, uh, what are you going to do with them? Or maybe you've mentioned it. I don't remember. I kind of get lost in conversation sometimes. And we got about one more minute here. Got a few people on. This is going to be exciting because I got a ton of stuff that I've never used before. And uh, I'm just excited to use it. Hey, Cole, how are you? And I think some of you guys that have maybe have been using one or more kinds of plastics, I think you're going to get, uh, well, you'll... You'll know what uh, I'm buying and uh, whether or not you want to use it sometime down the future. About the only thing that I had, I don't have, is I thought I had white, strong, and flexible, and I don't have any. It's all polished or other types of material, of plastics. Yeah, that's cool. A lot of stuff here. Lots of good stuff. Okay, well, we are at 8 30 8 30 here thank you cole glad uh, glad you're here uh hello, hello everyone eric with rock and h farm toys and we are here tonight on session five on comparing 3d printed parts uh some of you who know uh who know me or have bought stuff from me you'll understand uh that there is an infinite amount of 3D parts out there, all different styles, there's different companies, you got disk, desktop printers, uh, and various styles of desktop printers. The world of 3D uh, allows you and I to do essentially anything you want to do. Um, you can do it yourself, you can hire someone to do it. There's just an infinite amount of choice, and it, it's freaking amazing right now to be alive and to have all these things that are at our disposal. But what we're going to do tonight is, I've got a whole bunch of different products that I've uh, received just on Saturday, actually, in an order, and to kind of clear the air on what some of these different pro uh, types of printable materials, their attributes, so to speak, uh, we're going to kind of clear that air up a little bit, and I'll show you. The only unfortunate thing is, I don't know that you're going to be able to see a lot of what I'm talking about in the, sh in the shots, but at least you'll understand uh, from the way I describe it and do some of this stuff. I mean, we're going to bend things and see if we can break stuff. Uh, kind of with the materials, their qualities. Okay? So with that, I will tell you uh, briefly um, what I have here. I've got a uh, drill, a Crustbuster grain drill that I've had 3D printed for Crustbuster Manufacturing uh, here in Dodge City. It's their flagship 40 five foot drill so there's three 15 foot sections um, the boxes are printed in one material and then the press wheels and hitch and all that other stuff is in another I've got uh, grain bed parts and grain beds um, a service bed and gates um, just different parts for some of the builds that I am making and so we'll see what we got so when you're 3d printing at, at shapeways.com now this is not for desktop printing or anything you're going to do at home this is if you're going to shapeways.com and you're using their products their materials so this is what that's where all of this stuff came from and uh, people have asked me Eric when are you going to get a 3d printer I'm not I can order it from shapeways and have it in about 15 days and then when I have these files uploaded I can have a store I have no interest in learning how to use a 3d printer just zero zilch none so I'm not even I'm not doing it so when you go there there's an entry-level plastic called white strong and flexible and this particular plastic is their entry level it's the cheapest stuff they have available that I'm aware of and it will have the same consistency the finish will be equivalent to say 400 grit sandpaper okay so when you rub your finger across the grain it's going to have that uh, kind of a powdery not powdery but it'll have that kind of consistency on the outside okay well and on, the whole thing will have that kind of consistency that's your cheapest product now if you go up one level you can do white strong and flexible polished and basically they take the same item they put a, uh, plastic polishing stones for lack of a better term but they're just plastic pellets and then this thing will go through a polishing process 
and it knocks down the edges. So it's still rough, but it's not as rough. And frankly, uh, it's one of my favorites. And what I have here is my KN bed, uh, basically nappy, nappied, however you say that particular grain bed. It is a stake type grain bed from the 80s, 70s, real popular out in my country anyway, uh, and I think elsewhere as well. Um, but this particular bed was printed in white, strong, flexible, polished. Okay, now you can't see it, but I'll try not to move it so the autofocus doesn't go crazy. But you can kind of see it's not perfectly smooth like a styrene plastic would be. Okay, it's not bad, but it's not perfectly smooth. There we go. Okay. This particular plastic is very porous, and anyone that's used it, you understand this. And what I mean by that is, it is the equivalent, equivalent of Swiss cheese inside this thing. You can't see any pores, but you have to know that a laser, um, there's powder plastic that bonds these particles together. A CNC laser, just layer after layer, uh, builds this up. And then, um, and then, this is, and basically, it just causes the. I don't want to say, there's just tiny little pores that suck up lots and lots of paint. So this one is going to be. This is just. I mean, it takes layers of paint. You know, four or five or six different coats of paint to get this. Uh, to get all those pores sealed up. Okay, and Christopher. Boyum asks, is it 3D printed? Yes, all of the products you're going to see tonight are 3D printed in one fashion or another. From Shapeways.com. Ah, I can't. How are you uh, up in Canada? It's good to have you here. So, um, white, strong, and flexible. The, uh, white, strong, flexible, polished. Polished, right here, polished. You can move up one layer, two. You can do a white, strong, flexible, polished, and then they have, I don't, I don't think this is polished. It's just dyed black. Okay. Uh, this is a mounting frame for all of my grain beds. It's a universal thing for all the different kinds of grain beds I make. Um, and this is just, a, it's just dyed black. It's basically this with black dye on it. Because if you cut this, if you were to cut this in half anywhere, you're going to see the core of it is white. So it's just the outside has got this dye on it. And uh, so this would be, these two products are very, they're the same price. However, this one, um, because it's got a little black on it, it is, or gosh darn it, now I'm going to screw up. I think this might be just a taste more expensive than the white. I believe the dye does add just a little bit, but not a significant amount of cost to the product. I can go in and look uh, toward the end of our time together uh, depending on what you guys want to know and learn from from this experience. So uh, uh, do know that right this is just a little bit more but they're both on the same plane the only significant difference between cost is that little bit of dye. So these are the two of your entry-level type plastics. Okay those are entry type plastics. Um, I have bought yellow, I have bought red, I have bought blue, um, I want to buy some green, like get a Donahue combine trailer in green and then put a John Deere combine on it because that's what John Deere, or that's what uh, Donahue did back in the day. I, I didn't think to get this out earlier, but here is, this looks like a, a rat's nest, it's not. This is a whole bunch of my scissor hoists uh, for my grain bid kits. These are all my scissor, scissor hoists, and these are in blue. So, black, blue, and then I've bought these in red and other colors as well. So, there you go. That is, 
and then I, I just wired had uh, the designer wire these together to uh, save a little bit of money and I'm not going to get into that but there you go okay now we're going to move up in price and if you have any questions on some of this stuff I got my Shapeways account up so we can go in and look at what these things actually cost um, so you're going to learn what I charge for this if you go back and do the math or take any notes okay where was the elastoplastic okay here we go now this was kind of an interesting experiment uh, where I set it I'm hiding it now yeah, shoot we'll just get on another one. Oh, here it is okay now this this is called elastoplastic okay now this is a little bit it's a different material I don't think it's porous like the strong and flexibles are okay now this end gate is strong and flexible polished this one is elastoplastic a little bit more uh, as far as cost goes but it, it I mean or maybe it's not I bought a set of five I've got five of these in one file and it was sixteen dollars and forty three cents I'd have to go back and see what these are I don't recall but here you can kinda of see the difference there okay now this is not a mirror this is a mirrored image so if I say right and left well this one is white strong and flexible polished this one is elastoplastic okay now this is what's kinda of fun and I'll show you the difference the significant difference here okay this one here I'm bending that pretty good okay it doesn't have a lot of give strong flexible polished elastoplastic it is elastic it is very elastic um, and we've got lots of comments about uh, how to paint and do some different things with this uh, good stuff guys keep them coming don't be afraid to contribute what you know it just makes it better but yeah this one is elastoplastic and I'm, I've never painted this before I'm eager to see how this behaves with paint but you can see here I can almost bend that backwards without much effort I mean just boink 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 look at that and then you're not going to do that with strong and flexible uh, strong flexible polished see that a lot of pressure there and it ain't given okay this stuff is it it's remarkable just how uh, strong this particular product is okay so we covered um, your entry-level plastics okay so we're going to go from entry-level to high-end higher-end okay now for fun I've never used this one either I printed in acrylic this time and here we go okay these are the boxes for my crust buster grain drill okay okay hopefully you can see that okay I've printed these in white strong flexible polished or no strong and flexible and then this material here okay I do like this this one is smooth this is very very smooth compared to yeah, let's just break that there we go this is very smooth compared to um, strong and flexible I mean remarkably smooth and I I'm really kind of impressed with it as well and it didn't cost a whole lot these now oh, shoot that'll make you swear um, these printed for thirty three dollars and there's three of them nested together and I ended up well and I just broke all the catwalks off of that one that was nice well the, or the second one and then it showed up with a catwalk broke off of it um, but nevertheless very smooth and one thing I noticed on this that was different than anything else I've done on when I had these done in white strong flexible polished this was a hollow I mean there's a slot inside of here so the press wheels 
so the press wheels and excuse me the uh, seed tubes the seed tubes were actually designed to kind of flex up inside of the hopper which it, it obviously can't now um, but this is a, this is just a solid piece of plastic and it, it you know it's got some weight to it it feels kind of rubbery so I don't know how well it's going to take paint so we may have to do a little bit of cleanup work on that but when it was when this was with uh, white strong flexible I took air compressor and I just blew out the leftover residue powder from the printing process out of the uh, out of the crevice in there that's designed into it okay so white strong or excuse me this is white acrylic okay it's a neat little product I, I kinda like it it's cool um, the smaller parts seem brittle and let me see if I've got something here I can just kinda flex for you to see there we go a little part got caught in my keyboard so this is just a tiny it looks like a one and a half mil uh, it, it's just a wire to hold the the boxes together so it does it takes a little bit to break there it's almost a 90 degree angle so it's not bad um, one product I forgot to mention it's still on the lower end of the scale and I gotta remember which one this is so I don't say it incorrectly okay metallic plastic the reason I tried this is I wanna if I can get away from painting stuff I'm all about it so this is metallic plastic and I have some of these out in the garage that are white strong and flexible and PLA Tim if you would tell me what that is that would be great what I like about metallic plastic is it does give the appearance that it, it looks like a brushed aluminum color and I'm thinking wow maybe I can just uh, and not have to paint it that would be cool so this experiment here was uh, the reason to go after that is just to get out of painting that was it so it's kinda cool um, these cost fifty dollars for five of them they are more expensive than the other these are more expensive than white strong and flexible and again um, we only have ten minutes left let's try and I'll speed this up that way if you have some questions or you want to see what the price comparison on different items is I'll just go into my store and and or into the backyard and with, and I'll just tell you okay so again a lower end type plastic okay now we're just gonna jump right into the high-end plastics and our good friend Kent with Canada Canada Dakota farm toys up in Canada and here in the United States this is his product right here I believe uh, his partner Dusty drew this up and these are um, frosted ultra detail uh, fenders for a Peterbilt a DCP truck and um, what's nice about these is I'm gonna just show those get them right up to you maybe you can oh. let me just get rid of one of them here I wish I had something to compare it to but I don't um, you can see it's a bit translucent and it's thin but the detail is great now these particular fenders in real life have ribs on them and you can see the defined ribs which is really nice this is just it's a wonderful product because it brings out the high detail of your models um, your lower end plastics because they have to have different wall thicknesses and what that means is different parts have to be thick they will all the different materials have different minimum requirements on what they can print in so this item and this item uh, depending on how they're designed excuse me you can have two items that are exactly alike and depending on how they were designed will dictate what you can use to print them in okay I doubt this would go or maybe it would I don't know I doubt it would go in your low-end plastics just because the wall thicknesses these are really thin parts but they're designed to you know for detail versus uh, maybe more rugged design 
So that is your high-end plastic. And then I have, before I show you, I gotta go find this so I can get you a good price on what this one cost. Because this one is exceptional. Oh, by the way, um, these two fenders, uh, they come in, you can buy two pair of them at a time, and uh, I paid $22 for them. I'm tickled to death. I think they're great. And then I have another set of fenders that were in the same material for a 16, so I didn't think that was bad at all. Okay, this is my Crustbuster grain drill. Everything is wired together. That's why it looks the way it does. Okay, this is your frosted ultra detail. This, I could not print this in the low end plastics. It simply won't go. The seed tubes in here are too small and they do not meet the minimum requirements for your low end plastics. You can only go high end. And for that matter, I can only do it in uh, frosted ultra detail. Again, you're going to see this. It looks translucent. But, the, um, the detail is incredible. Um, you, I'm sure you can't see this in the shot, but you can almost see where the press wheels, you can almost see little spindles for the press wheels where they were connected. Um, I don't know how I'm going to show this to you without, you know, you got to just, pick it up and look at it and then it's got all the seed tubes here these are pretty brittle my only thing I don't like about this particular plastic is that the parts to me in my opinion are very brittle especially when you go to small pieces up here these uh, parts for the hitch they're not bad but these tiny little guys they are they're brittle and this particular piece my cost was ninety three dollars and thirty cents so that is the significant difference. What you lack in function with these, you make up for it in detail with this, okay? So this plastic here does not give you the level of detail that this particular plastic can. And then the price is reflected in that. Um, this is made with a different process than this as well, okay? So there are two different processes to get to the same conclusion, a 3D printed part. And that's what's nice about, that's what's nice about um, Shapeways is you get all these different options and choices, whereas if you're just using a desktop printer, that's all you got. So um, one of the guys here on the show, I've seen him post a couple times, Tim Holker, he asked me, can I get these hoists printed in brass? Because he's been doing some stuff with brass. And I said, well, sure. And I can get this um, printed. Let me see here. I'm going to go to the... I'm just going to where... Uh, now, where to go? Okay. One of these, like this, is cost me $25. If I were to do the same thing in brass, it's about $100. So that makes this hoist 10 bucks a piece in brass. But it will print in brass, which is kind of cool. And then you get a really solid piece of... You just don't get plastic. You get metal. So that's kind of cool. All right. Um, it's 8.52, and I want to leave lots of time for questions here, guys. Is there something about what I'm doing that you want to know... I am more than happy to go into my shop and um, get the details, do some price comparison or anything like that on any of my models. Um, just say the word and I'll look it up. So, mm, the herd bumper that I had out, I don't, don't think I brought that in. I think I left it in the garage. The herd bumper. I didn't bring that in. Um, that only cost three ninety nine or three forty nine actually, so that's not bad. And that is in frosted ultra detail. Uh, 
Um, one thing that's really nice about everything that we're all doing in 3D, especially a lot of you guys that are doing some of this, is um, you just have so much choice. And uh, have you printed anything in extreme frosted detail? No, I have not done that yet. Good, excellent, Carson. Thank you for that. Um, Tim asked me about the Acrylate, and no, I've not printed anything in that yet. I did have, I tried to print some stuff in that, and, it, and they all got rejected. Yes, Ryan, I can get this whole thing printed in brass. And then you just cut apart the parts. And let's go to hoist. And if you want to try it, I'll be glad to put it up there at cost. I told Tim the same thing. I said, if you want to experiment, let me know, and I'll make it for sale at cost, and you can try it. Okay. So this blue one, the way this is, cost $27.32, uh, just the way it is. So this was 27, that's my cost, my cost. Then we can go to uh, metallic plastic. It says 40 bucks on metallic pl plastic. Frosted Ultra Detail is $26, which I'm kind of surprised. I printed this in Frosted Ultra Detail, the hoists, and I didn't like it. Okay. You, right now the initial quality check, quality, the initial checks, the algorithms say I can print this in raw silver at $155, polished silver at $160, premium sil silver for $472, raw brass for $110, polished brass for $133. They'd be $13 and change if you were to do this in brass. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tim just responded about his experience with frosted extreme detail. Uh, that brings up a great point. Um, depending on, on your temperament, if you like extreme, if you like a lot of high-end detail and you're going for really high quality, then doing the frosted and extreme plastics is for you because that's what you're going to get. You're going to get really high quality. I, my notion is I just want my, all of my models are either in a box in my garage or they're sitting in my office at my day job and I just look at them from about five, seven feet away and that's what I want. I want to be able to see it and go over there once in a while and play with it and then I let it sit over there and then I look at it from five feet away again. So that's been my temperament when I go into design things. Now like the herd bumper and a few other things where you, they really need to be, they, they can, just can't be wonky or, or not wonky, that's the wrong word. I just want them high detail because if it's a bumper, you can print that in frosted ultra detail for three or four dollars and, and you have a really nice model. So, um, any other tips? There's been some great comments. I've been watching them roll through about painting and just the design process generally. Uh, that is some great stuff. And thank you for all of you for contributing because that just makes this whole session much better. Um, anything else I can answer about? my models that I've made, I'm, like I said, uh, more than happy to... Holy cow! I can get this... I can get it printed in platinum for $11,000 or 18 karat gold for five. or porcelain. This says it will pass the initial check on high-definition acrylate, but I don't think it's going to go PLA. 
It says it's passed, but I doubt that too. I don't know, maybe it would. I, maybe I should try it. Um, I just haven't bothered with it yet. <laughs> this is cool. Well, yes, Tanner, If only if you buy them in platinum. If you buy them in cheap plastic, you can get them for 25 <laughs> That's just good fun. That's good fun. Um, let me think. I know Mock Farms has done a bunch, a bunch of 3D printing. Uh, Tim's big into it. Jason's done some stuff. Uh, a lot of guys out there doing really cool work. Um, while you're here, if you have the opportunity or you can, uh, go ahead and put a link to your Shapeway store in the comments so people that uh, are seeking something you have or at least want to go learn from you, they can go see your stuff. So do put a link in the comment box there. That would be wonderful. So um, we're right here at 9 o'clock, so I don't want to keep you, and it is the end of our time. So uh, first and foremost, thank you all for being here. Thank you for, I mean, just all those comments because that is your contributions make this all happen so thank you for that um, 3d printing comes up all the freaking time uh, in the different groups we're in and message boards in different places don't be afraid to share this video with uh, people that are asking especially if it's on Facebook eventually this will be on YouTube uh, and you can share it there but certainly please share these things and get them out there it, hopefully it'll help some folks and I see some links coming into Shapeway stores that's great thank you for that um, like comment share spread the love don't keep this information under a bushel basket I appreciate all of you guys being here your attention your comments it's it's just great and this makes it so much more fun I wish you guys a very prosperous and happy Thanksgiving uh, hopefully if you're traveling you make it to your destination safely you eat too much turkey and have a cocktail and all that good stuff. <laughs> I wish you the very best, and I will see you next week. See ya.